ministering and other levels of government. Some of our city leaders have strayed far from the principles that they were elected to uphold. They have shown a blatant disregard for the constitutional rights of our citizens, their freedom of speech, their freedom of expression, and their freedom of the press, which are all being trampled upon in pursuit of ideological and personal agendas. Other, our bylaws are being broken repeatedly, catering to special interest groups and developers, while the voices of ordinary citizens like yours and mine are being silenced. In recent months, Pickering Council has introduced draconian, undemocratic policies that limit public participation and transparency within our beloved chambers. Delegation time limits have been slashed from 10 minutes to five. The public is no longer allowed to record public meetings, and the media too is barred from recording unless given a two-third majority of council's approval. And already, council has shown their true colors by voting against a media whose outlet holds opposing views. Residents from outside of Pickering, including Durham residents, are prohibited from participating in our meetings unless the topic is approved by two-thirds majority. This, despite we contract with their governments as well, and the fact that our four of our council members sit at the Durham Region Council. Even Pickering residents are now being silenced from speaking openly freely in our chambers unless their topic has been scrutinized under a microscope and approval given by a mover and a seconder and two-thirds vote. Now let's be clear, if the council doesn't want to hear what you have to say, or if they don't like your opinions, they will silence you. They're effectively forbidding you from having a voice. This is not just a disregard for free speech, it is an outright attack on your right to be heard. Let's talk about the new nebulous trespass policies, what I like to call the hurt feelings bylaw. These draconian rules give the council the power to banish anyone based on flimsy excuses like social media posts, language, their tone of voice, or even what someone might be wearing if it happens to offend someone. This isn't just a policy. It's a blatant attempt to silence dissent crush opposing views, and manipulate the narrative to fit their agendas, their views, and to control their narrative. We've seen what, what looks like an outrageous manipulation in the city's YouTube feeds of our council and committee meetings. There's been time jumps, white noise, and possible signs of audio tampering. When I push for an independent third party to record our meetings to ensure moving forward that these recordings were accurate and transparent, since the public is no longer allowed to record, the city of Pickering flatly, outright, refused. This isn't just poor governance, it's outright tyranny. Our councils and governments are intoxicated with power. It seems to give them a perverse pleasure to divide us, to make us feel helpless, to instill fear in those who dare to hold opposing opinions. This toxic culture is ruining relationships, it's tearing families apart, and forcing people to live in constant fear of speaking their minds, their truths. This nightmare needs to end, and will only end if we, the people, rise above the nonsensical nonsense they are trying to impose on each and every one of us. It's absolutely scandalous how taxpayer dollars are being squandered on frivolous spending at every single level of government, while critical needs like, pro like providing clean drinking water to our First Nations communities are callously ignored, despite countless failed promises of keeping our duty to consult. As of this past July, 31 First Nations communities remain under long-term drinking water advisories. This is not just a failure, it is a betrayal. We hear endless land acknowledgements, but these are nothing more than empty words, or what I like to say, lip service, when it's not backed by real action. Our First Nations people deserve access to clean, safe drinking water, and it's our solemn duty to push and deliver on the promise, no matter what level of government. But the disgrace doesn't stop there. Our homeless population is increasing and our food banks are struggling to keep food on the shelves, while our governments and city officials, who are supposed to protect and serve us, are instead taxing us deeper into poverty yet their wages and benefits continue to increase while they sit idly by letting our most vulnerable citizens suffer in silence. 
Our government continues to waste taxpayer dollars on lavish perks for elected officials and city staff, sending funds abroad to other countries without addressing the suffering of our own people. Millions of dollars are being funneled into the consultant fees and reports that are hidden from the public, and thousands of dollars are spent on politicians to, ascend, to attend events that serve only to benefit the politicians and the vendors who wine and dine them for future business. Maybe the Premier could put legislation in place that would disallow any elected official and city staff from receiving gifts and benefits from developers, vendors, special interest groups, or anyone lobbying the governments for business. Maybe politicians should be wearing these lobbyist logos on their jackets to show transparency of who supports them so people can keep track of how they vote and see where their loyalty lies. Rob Ford was a true tramp champion of fiscal responsibility, unafraid to call out the wasteful perks enjoyed by city employees. He was determined to keep politicians and public servants in line, ensuring that every dollar of taxpayer money was spent wisely. This corruption must end. The city of Pickering, on top of all of their wasteful spending, is also vindictive, hateful, and they even voted to spend $200,000 of your taxpayers' dollars to fight me in a judicial review. Instead of, me, instead of paying me $15,000 plus in lost salary that I was financially sanctioned on the recommendation by Principal's Integrity for doing my job on behalf of my constituents. It's deeply troubling that integrity commissioners who hold significant power over elected officials are themselves unelected and paid by the very municipalities that they oversee. This creates an inherent conflict of interest with their loyalty may lie more with those who sign their paychecks and with the principles of fairness and accountability. I ask, do we really need them? They have only been implemented in the last few years, yet they wield immense influence over the democratic processes. Council and the corporation of the city of Pickering and all levels of government need to remember that it's your money. It's meant to be used judicially for the common good not for self-serving agendas. This is not just mismanagement. It's a criminal neglect of duty. In Pickering, the Integrity Commissioner has audaciously pushed for and was granted changes to our policies and procedures to ensure their integrity reports cannot be questioned from the public or anyone else. This is nothing short of a blatant effort to shield their actions from scrutiny and undermine transparency and public trust. When you realize that Principal's Integrity, the firm the corporation of the city pays and relies on, is serving 65 other municipalities across Ontario, it's evident that their impartiality is severely compromised. In my personal experience, the Integrity Commissioner has proven to be untrustworthy and biased. They have repeatedly lied, failed to investigate complaints thoroughly, and refused to answer any questions from those they accuse, effectively preventing individuals from clearing their names. Let me be absolutely clear. This is a rigged system. The integrity of a process where the, those responsible for upholding fairness and instead serving the corporation's interests, not ours, it's fundamentally flawed. It's high time our Premier steps in and enacts legislation to protect the public's interest and prevent officials from manipulating the system to shield their misconduct. We need reforms that ensure accountability and transparency, not a, fix, not a facade of integrity designed to protect the corrupt. In Pickering and throughout Canada, we are also witnessing a disturbing trend where the right to personal dignity is being stripped away from men women, boys, and girls, in spaces that should be safe. Bathrooms, change rooms. People are being forced to share these spaces with members of the opposite sex, leading to a widespread discomfort and real psychological harm to some. What's even more troubling is that only members 18 years and older at our personal recreation complex are protected to use spaces aligned with their biological sex leaving children and those who can't afford memberships vulnerable and unprotected from these same rights. This is not just unfair. 
In my opinion, it's downright disgusting. We are discriminating against the most vulnerable among us. Our children and those who lack the means to protect themselves are having to beg to use biological change rooms. This is inhumane. It's absolutely absurd that these changes have only emerged since COVID. For as long as we've all existed, nobody has ever had to beg for their basic right to use their biological washroom. It's disturbing beyond belief. And anyone ever thought that this was a good idea? I just don't understand. What we are witnessing is a catastrophic lapse in common sense, <coughs> leading to dangerous consequences. Globally, there have been too many tragic incidences in these spaces because these are not isolated events and they can no longer be ignored. This isn't about politics. It's about the safety and the well-being of our citizens. We must safeguard their right to personal dignity and stop sacrificing them on the altar under the guise of political correctness. I urge Premier Ford and all other members of Parliament to implement common sense legislation before it's too late. I am certain that neither Premier Ford nor any other parl parliamentarian want to change in spaces with children, let alone with children of the opposite sex. And if you do, then your values too will become very questionable. Our citizens absolutely deserve to be safe and our children protected and we cannot allow this misguided policy to continue anymore. With all of the bullying, intimidation, threats, and attacks on my character, sexual harassment and psychological harassment that I have had to endure, and the corruption, the collusion, and what I consider bribery that I have witnessed, I have suggested that all members of the council be investigated for wrongdoings. Yet not a single member, not even the mayor, would second that motion. So what does that tell you? Because to me, it's very telling when those who cry the loudest about integrity refuse to have their own actions scrutinized. If they have nothing to hide, why did they support an investigation? This silence from council speaks volumes. We are also witnessing a troubling trend of our city catering to special interest groups at the expense of our own procedures and bylaws, principles of fairness and equality. Time and again, procedures and bylaws have been selectively enforced or outright ignored to serve the agendas of a few, rather than the common good. Rules for me, but not for thee. The selective enforcement has not only broken the trust between the government and the people, but has also eroded the rule of law in our very own city. Over the past few months, Mr. Mayor, and fellow councillors have been participating in a downright dangerous game to lobby the provincial government to change the municipal act so they can remove a sitting elected a member. This is a direct attack on democracy where the people, not politicians, should have the power to decide who it is that actually represents them. If this change is allowed, it opens the door to unchecked abuse of power where dissenting voices can be silenced at will. It's a blatant attempt to consolidate control and eliminate opposition, <laughs> turning our councils into echo chambers for all those that are in power. It is not only happening in Pickering, but in other municipalities as well. And any elected official pushing for this should step down immediately for betraying the very democratic process that we were all elected to protect. This move isn't just undemocratic, it's authoritarian. We must fiercely oppose any effort to strip the people of their right to have a voice and to choose their leaders. Our duty is to serve, it's not to rule the people. It is also disgraceful to see politicians at all levels of government using name calling and shameful rhetoric to silence and intimidate those who dare to speak up. These tactics are designed to stop people from expressing their concerns and to create nothing more than an environment of fear. Let me be absolutely clear. This disgraceful behavior starts at the top with Trudeau and you, Premier Ford. You set the tone and now my mayor and fellow councillors thinks it's perfectly acceptable to steep to your level and it's no wonder that this garbage has trickled down to fake Facebook accounts 
and keyboard warriors who think that they can hide behind screens and throw insults without consequences to those with opposing views within each and every one of our communities. You've all set a very shameful example. It is absolutely appalling to see my fellow politicians behave this way, spreading vile rhetoric to silence and intimidate anyone who dares to oppose them and speak their truth. This pathetic tactics are nothing but a coward's way to cycle free speech and breed fear. Only spineless cowards hide behind such childish nonsense. Real leaders engage in real conversations. They listen and they address issues with both respect and dignity and integrity. Those who stoop to name calling and character assassination have no place in leadership. If politicians can't uphold the dignity of their office, then they should step down. Because this kind of toxic behavior is a stain on our democracy and we are much better than that. Again, I have personally faced relentless bullying, intimidation, and threats from my mayor and fellow councillors, including financial sanctions, name calling, and persistent lies attacking my character, all because I am standing up for what is right, just like I am doing here today. But these are not just attacks on me. They are attacks on the very principles of integrity, honesty, and accountability that should guide all politicians' actions. In my opinion, our, municipality, our municipality, municipality, like many others, need to be torn down and they need to be rebuilt, given power back to the people where it rightfully belongs. And the rot doesn't stop at our city, not at our councils, our provincial or our federal governments, or even other institutions. Historically, Canada had defamation laws and journalistic standards that aim to prevent the spread of false information. However, with the rise of digital media and the push for sensationalism, these standards have eroded, allowing biased and misleading reports to flourish. The CBC and other journalists have become a disgrace, promoting rumors using clickbait titles instead of investigating the truth. They have become another group paid to report certain narratives that fit only their agenda rather than the facts. This is not journalism. It is sensationalism, or if I may be so crude to say BS, and is nothing other than a betrayal of the public's trust. I call on Premier Ford again to bring back legislation that demands accurate reporting by all journalists based on facts and hold media accountable for their role in spreading misinformation. I would also like to ask Premier Ford to have a serious conversation with Prime Minister Trudeau about the millions of dollars being funneled into the CBC. This government funding looks more like bribery than support for unbiased journalism. If we were truly committed to media transparency and to integrity, we need to stop propping up an organization that increasingly serves as a mouthpiece rather than a check on power. Let's put an end to this questionable financial relationship and restore faith to our, all of our public institutions. It is also disheartening to see how DEI, which we all know as diversity, equity, and inclusion, initiatives which are intended to foster inclusivity, have instead become sources of nothing more than division and exclusion. Globally, DEI policies are being banned as they are increasingly recognized for their counterproductive effects, fostering division rather than unity and indoctrinating in individuals to adhere to a specific narrative. In Pickering, DEI is being enforced across all areas of the corporation, including the hiring process, which is deeply troubling. Such policies should not lead to discrimination based on skin color, religious beliefs, or sexual preferences. I was the only one who voted against the, its implementation because as a leader, I recognize the importance of seeing what everyone else can see, but I can think differently and I can question if what is being presented is universally beneficial or not. Our approach must reflect true inclusivity, promoting equality and respect for all individuals. This solution is straightforward. 
Treat everyone equally and fairly based on their merit and on their character, united under the red and white flag of our country, our Canadian flag. We should not be segregating people into groups by the color of their skin, their religious beliefs, or their sexual preferences, which are really only designed to divide us. This approach will ensure that our policies genuinely serve the common good, rather than creating new forms of exclusion. It's our duty as politicians to remain in a state of neutrality and not cause division by a hierarchy of beliefs and of chaos. This is not be about being left or right. It is about what is right and what is wrong. It is about common sense for common people. The name calling we see from politicians at all levels of government used to silence and shame those who dare to speak up is absolutely disgusting. Only cowards, again, hide behind such childish rhetoric, not leaders. And those who engage in it should apologize, or they should step down, for they are not fit to lead. Our municipalities need to be torn down and rebuilt with integrity, transparency, and respect for all of the people that they actually serve. We must return power to where it belongs, in the hands of the people. Our children deserve to grow up free from political agendas that impose adult issues on them, especially when it comes to making life-altering decisions about their bodies. We cannot allow children to be pressured into choices that involve irreversible hormone blockers or surgeries that remove healthy body parts. These are decisions with lifelong consequences that no child should be forced to make. Let alone our, ch let our children be children. Let them learn to grow in an environment of respect, of dignity, and of safety, where their innocence is preserved and their well-being is prioritized. It's our duty to protect their future, ensuring that they have time and freedom to discover who they are without the weight of adult controversies on their young shoulders. We should be teaching our children that no safe adult will keep se ask them to keep secrets. As for our government claiming transparency and accountability, these have become mere buzzwords, not practices. We are not elected to cater to developers special interest groups, or to make friends with those with deep pockets, following along with the status quo. Yet we see our leaders doing exactly that, pushing through agendas that benefit the few at the expense of the many. We need to be a government that serves the people, not one that keeps serving itself. We need to be leaders who listen, who act with integrity, and who put the public good above all else. We need to restore transparency, accountability, and trust in our institutions. And we need to stand up to those bullies, the corrupt officials and the special interest groups who are trying to take away everyone's rights and freedoms. This is not a fight that I take on lightly, but it is one that must be fought. For the sake of our city, our province, our country, all of its people, and all of our future generations to come. We must stand up against this abuse of power, this corruption, and this betrayal of public trust. We must restore integrity and trust in our governments. And I'm committed to leading that charge because I know together we can bring about the change that is so desperately needed in Canada. Serving the people, not ruling them, because strength does not lie in the absence of fear but in the courage to face it head on and to rise above it. Thank you, I'm Councillor Robinson, and God bless. If you are a reporter on Zoom and have a question, please use the raise hand function. Si vous êtes un journaliste sur Zoom et avez une question, s'il vous plaît, utilisez la fonction de main levée. Avez vous one question, one follow up? Comme d'habitude, une question et une question de suivi. Thank you. This concludes the press conference. Thank you.